Historical drama Mary and George takes us inside the political intrigues and personal relationships that shaped the court of James VI and I. Here, we're examining the key players on screen and what's known about their real lives. I'm just here on business. What's your business, sir? A hammer or anvil? Shove it up, bucket. Or both? Welcome to The Rewind. This is the scandalous yet true story behind Mary and George. Before we begin, make sure to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button for good luck. No need to whisper, shout it out. Mm, will you share your new title? Based on a true story. Many elements of Mary and George are drawn from real history, and the drama is based on a 2017 historical book by writer and broadcaster Benjamin Woolley, The King's Assassin, The Fatal Affair of George Villiers and James I. Woolley first came across Mary and George when researching another writing project that involved the death of King James VI and I. As portrayed in the drama, the real Mary was intensely ambitious for her family. When her first husband, also called George, died, she made two more advantageous matches that allowed her to cover his debts and ascend the social hierarchy of the day. Mary singled out George among her four children as having the charms and appeal necessary to succeed. The closer Mary became to court, she was able to maneuver her charismatic son into positions to advance. First, she sent him to France to learn courtly manners, and finally to the royal court to capture the king's attention. James and George met at the estate of Apethorpe in Northamptonshire during a visit by the king's court in 1614 when George was introduced as a cupbearer to wait upon the king and his high court. Over the course of the entertainment and dancing, as shown in the drama, he caught the king's eye and began to cultivate a relationship that challenged the king's existing favorite, a Scottish noble called Robert Carr. Why don't you go find a bed elsewhere, hmm? You're good at that, no? James the Sixth and First on screen. James the Sixth and First is played by Tony Curran on screen, Depicted, in turn, as raucous, vulnerable, and neurotic, he is a monarch plagued by past trauma. Known as the Cradle King, James assumed the throne of Scotland at only 13 months old, and his childhood was marred by instability. His father, Lord Darnley, was murdered when he was just a few months old. His mother, Mary, Queen of Scots, fled to England after her forced abdication in July of 1567, where she remained Elizabeth I's captive for almost 20 years until her execution in February of 1587. The young King James showed intellectual prowess in his youth and was encouraged by his teachers and advisors from an early age to believe that he was God's representative on earth. He did struggle with some physical challenges. As a child, he had to be tied onto his horse in order to indulge his passion for hunting, and he would continue to walk while leaning on the shoulder of an attendant for much of his adult life. Viewers of Mary and George meet James in his later years, after he had succeeded Elizabeth I to become King of England, styled as James VI and I, when his court travels to the Villiers family home. James's court had something of a reputation for drunken debauchery. There are a lot of references to these wild parties that were held at court, which is quite different from the entertainments that Elizabeth staged. One courtier described James's court as if the devil was contriving every man to blow himself up by wild riot and excess. This dubious pleasure is shown on screen as the Villiers family grapples with the extortionate costs of hosting the monarch and his favorites, and the capricious nature of the king's favor. Involvement in the King's Death when King James died at Theobald's Palace in Hertfordshire on 27th March 1625, he was with his son Charles, who would succeed James as Charles I, and George Villiers. 
The official sources had it that the king died of an attack of dysentery complicated by malaria or typhus, which were endemic in England in the early 17th century. However, the secretive nature of what happened in the king's final days left room for much speculation in the months following his death. The unauthorized version of James' death would take another 12 months to achieve a definitive form. But the anxious whispers around the court in the early spring of 1625 were disturbing enough. Something untoward had happened in James' sick room. Someone had violated the strict protocols regulating who was to treat the king and when. To manage James's conditions, there were a set of treatments that were regularly used. James reportedly scoffed at medicine and found the regime repugnant. Villiers and the king had regularly corresponded on ailments and treatments that had plagued them both. And in this final illness, Villiers procured a plaster suggested by his mother, and unbeknown to the other doctors, it was applied to the king's breast. In the months following James' death, Villiers was accused outright of poisoning the king. What cannot be doubted is the historical significance of the political argument that Villiers did have a role in the king's death. He's not meant to have visitors. I'm not a visitor. You are. We have a room here. At the king's invitation. And that's going to be it, folks. What did you think of our list? Before you leave, don't forget to give this video a like and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Check out these other videos here at The Rewind, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads.